what's up you guys this is Kat from Old Reading Farm but not at Old Reading Farm. Thanks for joining me. In today's video we are going to be testing out some knitting machines and we are going to take an attempt at speed making some hats. So let's get into it. So we have here our precious alpaca yarn. We ended up with four or five skeins of yarn that has these green tags that were dictated a little bit lumpy by our yarn person so we're gonna use this as test yarn and then we also got some other kind of generic yarn to test with these machines have like a hand crank so i've seen on the internet and maybe we can insert a clip of what i've seen somebody hooking up a power drill to one of these and like whipping together a hat in like what seems like just minutes though so, i mean who knows how long it really took so we're going to test to see if we can figure out how to use these at all. My mom is here for backup because she has a longer attention span than I do. Hi, Kat. <laughs> so we're going to unbox maybe one, maybe both of these knitting machines and see if we can make some hats. What it looks like. Knitting machine, magic loop loom, more than a toy. So... You've never used one of these before, right? I have never used one of these before. Do you know how we're going to know, like, how many rows? I would imagine there's instructions in here that will tell you that, I think. <laughs> I think this is an experiment. We'll have to play around with it and see what happens. The big reveal, here it comes. Oh, they give you yarn. Oh, they do? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Uh-oh. Things to put together. Well, that's why we brought you the instruction follower. Remember, John said, Catherine, don't touch anything. Let your mother figure it out. <laughs> this is my mom's sweet dog, Abby. Hi, Abby. <laughs> An instruction? Well, it's not that many instructions. That looks like a lot of pages to me. We'll use the English side. Oh, what's the other side? Interesting. Chinese, I would imagine. Yeah. Mandarin. Chinese. Okay. I'll read the directions, and then we'll put it together. You're going to pre-read? I think I have to. Okay. So much for pre-reading the instructions, though. <laughs> she read one step. We'll go back. I'm going to go back to reading now. <laughs> we are reading instructions. Here's the handle again. We've figured out the, what the tension guide is. We've put the feet on the machine, so now it looks like a UFO getting ready for takeoff. And the tension guide needs to snap in. So this is the tension guide. One side clicks in, but... Know how to get the other side in. Kat, you might have to do this. <laughs> You're becoming familiar with the mechanism? <laughs> I am, but it's funny. Every once in a while, it seems to just catch just a little bit. And there's not even any yarn involved. Correct. So we'll see. It, maybe it'll work better with yarn on it. Okay, so this is the tension guide. It's in. T is switch down tube netting tube netting here and p is switch up panel knitting tubes and panels of course we don't know what that means okay so so far we have been told by the instructions that thick yarns don't work thick yarns don't work furry yarns won't work <laughs> this yarn should work but it needs to be balled because it needs to unroll easily so thinner yards or thicker yarns they they said that you just have to adjust the tension if it's really thin yarn you'll need to go through all three tension whatevers so you have to ball it because that's going to be the thing that's going to allow the machine to feed it more easily is my understanding so joanne's going to keep reading and i'm going to ball he really is yeah He's funnier than I am. He's he's also, he's just a great husband. Oh, you're so lucky you have a great I husband. All right, 
I was thinking when I was coming back from Walking Abbey and you were, you know, went to the door, I thought, isn't it so nice that we like each other? Mm -hmm. Okay. Roll each skein of yarn into a ball. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. Here, Catherine, this will be for you. If you choose to work directly from a skein, pull out a large amount of yarn every well, we're so not doing often. That. We're balling. Yeah. Well, just so you know. If you don't, the machine may skip a stitch. Watch carefully because the yarn cannot become taut when feeding into the machine. Thread machine casting on the first row only. Ooh, here we are, casting. Casting, casting on. Turn the crank to become familiar with the mechanism. There's something there that says feeder? No. So this is the yarn guide, so I'm gonna assume that the feeder is in here. Wait, we've got more directions. So, so far what we've done is put this white hook, see all the rest of the hooks are mauve, and this one's white. We put it directly to the white, of, <laughs> to the white, to the right of this thing. Okay, so what we're doing is we're turning the crank and we're looping it under these little hooks every other one. So, watch. See, it didn't go under that one. It did go under that one. Not that one. Yes, that one. Not that one. Yes, that one. Not, yes. Not, yes, not, yes. And this oh, is casting no. on the first row. And it said go until you get back to the white hook, which is where we are now. So now we need more instructions. Okay, so next up we're setting tension. This is the instructions for setting tension, and then that's our interpretation of what we're doing. So we chose focus. We chose medium. Yeah. Next step was begin knitting. <laughs> what kind of step is that? Step five, thread under the white hook again and begin slowly cranking without skipping any hooks. Got it, Kat? Yep. Okay, you're on. Okay, without skipping any hooks. Ooh. I see that little devil that missed it. Slow and steady. I'm going as slow as I can. Oh, I didn't miss. Here, do you want Is what? Isn't this a little looper here? Oh, that's that's the end end, the butt end. Oh, oh, okay. This is really quite clever. Totally. It's freaking genius. So what happens after this? <laughs> you mean you're ready for the next direction? I want to know what it is. Begin um, knitting. Watch carefully to make sure not one hook is skipped for the first three or four rows. All right, I'm watching carefully. So... It's kind of like relaxing to watch these little, like, shark babies come up and eat the yarn so how many rows do you think you've done i just passed the white thing again so oh, so that's two rows two okay oh These there goes the white thing again foundation and must be done correctly must be done correctly <laughs> hold the top of the machine with your left hand keep it steady and crank the handle away from you cranking with your right hand Keep an eye on your yarn to make sure you always have enough loosened to feed easily into the machine. But this, the ball seems yeah, it to should, be should just auto do really it nicely. So I've 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 done four rotations. So after four, you can fly. Okay, let's stop again so I can read ahead. <laughs> Let me take a break from you, Abby. Abby, would you like your dinner, sweetheart? You've been waiting so long, and I know you haven't been eating hardly. You're still not up to the full amount of food, right? Because that's what the vet said. So while 
time sitting here spinning away. Our question is how do you make this smaller? Because it seems to be like a kind of one size fits all and it's like too big for a hat. So I think what we're gonna do is mom's taking a break to feed Abby and then we're going to maybe do some Googling to try to figure out how to adjust the size of something because we're using this uh, blue yarn that came with this machine, but I also bought some, whoop. oh, it just ripped. Oh, huh. interesting. Okay, so we've got a big problem. Uh -oh. So that's where the yarn gripped, and I tried to tie it back together, but then I tried to go back, and it fell off of all these hooks. Mm. And now it's just like disintegrating. I would... Like if you just pull it, it just falls apart. There's got to be a way to do that because if you run from one skein of yarn to the other, you've got to be able to tie them together. Right. <laughs> womp, womp. Uh, but you know what? So now that we've kind of got the hang of it, and actually, here, can you put this on your head? <laughs> to sure. See, to see, like, how too big it is for a hat? It's not really that big, right? It's not. It's it actually, a little loose. A little loose, but not like wildly loose. No. Well, that's good. Okay. So you know what? I wonder if we should even bother balling that free yarn that we don't have enough. To, it's like a nice headband. <laughs> well, I mean, before it fell apart. I wonder if we should switch over to John's orange yarn Maybe. since we have enough of it to try to actually do a project. Sure. Hang on a new yarn. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, because if I square knot and make sure it won't slip, cut close to the knot and remove yarn from tension bar, it won't go smoothly through the hole. Uh -huh. Hold the yarn taut and crank until the knot is knitted past the tensioner. Then thread the yarn back through the yarn tensioner here Catherine get back to knitting you're almost done <laughs> we're updating okay so after I broke the blue yarn but I don't think I broke it I think that yarn came broken because that was free yarn we've switched over to I bought John bright orange because that's his favorite color a safety orange um, and look at this wow wow so we watched some tutorials online uh, rumor has it that you're supposed to do 130 rows and there's a row counter on this bad boy and then you basically like close both ends when we get there we'll show you but we're going to close both ends and then kind of fold it in half so it's going to be like a, a double thick knit but isn't that cool so how long do you think this took once we got going 10 minutes <laughs> it's five awesome eight <laughs> <laughs> so uh this is not like a long-term thing and i think it's going just as well as it could and I think we'll be able to finish this and test alpaca tonight, too. Definitely. Yeah. Yay. Okay, so that somehow says 130. You'll just have to believe me. <laughs> and then, I don't know what we're doing. You, you watched it better. So the, the machine, which is actually really nice, it came with two of these little crochet hooks and that plastic needle. So once you get to 130, we're going to... Thread the needle. Cut the yarn. Cut yourself plenty of slack. You have the needle threaded and you've got to take it off the tension and you're going to put this needle with the yarn through every little loop. So we're going to show you that now. Because this is the most, if we mess this up. So the instructions say hold the yarn up and then crank without using it for one row. <laughs> we just watched a video and that's not what it said to do. So we're gonna reconsult the video. Video credit to Diana Levine Crafts. Thank you. Okay, so what we're gonna do is take 
the needle and shove it in between here. Okay, so I'm just going in between these little teethies, grabbing my yarn and pulling it. And you do each and every loop, correct? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Okay. I hope this is right. This makes me nervous. I can understand why you're nervous, Catherine, because if this isn't the right, then the whole hat is ruined. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> this is this is exactly what you do. I, I feel confident. While I finish doing this, do you want to take our friends on a journey and show them the hat that you're hand knitting? Oh, certainly. Hold on. I'll be right back. Perfect. Okay, so I hadn't knit really in several years. And I got this beautiful alpaca yarn from Old Dreading Farm. And I wanted to knit a hat. So you can knit a hat either with two needles and then you'd have to have a seam. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to seam. I thought I was, I thought I knew what I was doing. <laughs> so anyway, you use four needles and you knit in the round. Now, I'm not really fast when I knit. So here is what I've done. It looks really good though. How many inches do you think that is? Like three? Like two and a half maybe? Uh, and I've probably worked on this for four hours. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so it is really slow. Now, one thing I would say again, I'm not an experienced knitter and these needles are not really long enough. So I did have some trouble too with my stitches falling off and then I'd make mistakes. So it's been, it's been a journey. I think if I do finish this hat and then knit another hat, I think it will take me less time but clearly, hand knitting against the machine, the machine wins. I would have skipped a business critical part. But so we took it off. And now we're going to pull this little drawstring. <laughs> so this little bit was going to be like the inside. The tutorial did some like sewing business up here to make this a little bit like neater or more organized. Yes. And I think what think what happens is you do some stitches back and forth mm -hmm. to kind of tidy this up. Although you're not going to see it at the end of the day. Yeah, John doesn't need it to be tidy. Okay. And then so we then we take this end and we somehow close this up too and then fold it in half. Too, yeah, it's too small for me with the, the brim. Uh, well, I would rate this about a 10 out of 10. Right? Yep. I mean, my pom-pom making skills could leave a little to be desired. All right, so it's the next day and I am headed home. I had a overnight dog sitting job last night. So I am excited to show John the hats that my mom and I made. Um, together we made one hat for him in that bright safety orange that you saw. And then when I got back to my dog sitting job, I made one more hat last night out of the alpaca fiber, which I'm really happy that it worked. And I made one more hat out of yarn that I had purchased because that's what I had with me. And I figured, hey, if I can bang out three hats, um, that's good. So. The final hat that I made took me about, I say almost exactly an hour, which is I think pretty good. We won't be able to, you know, turn out a million hats a day or anything like that. It's not gonna be a factory, but I think that's pretty good if I could, if I could whip together a hat in an hour. So let's go show John how those hats came out. I'm really excited. I hope he gives me a big reaction. Uh-oh, what are we doing? <laughs> Why are you filming my reaction? I'm very scared. I'm terrified. 
What? Wow. That looks awesome. Put it on your head. Hell yeah. I got a big head. Oh, it's too small? <laughs> oh, it looks cute. Wow, it's warm. Is it? It's this looks cool. awesome. This looks awesome. Give a spin. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> what do you think? I think it looks awesome. I can't believe you guys made this. Take that off your head. That's it. Ready for the next one? Oh, wow. Geez. Oh, that's nice. Is this alpaca? That's alpaca. You get... I'm gonna ruin those. <laughs> so was this was this much harder to do? Well, it came out like a little lumpy. What yeah. do you think? Why well, I, I agree. Is it? Is that? <laughs> this looks inappropriate. So what do you think? Well, I think this is it's very nice. Just John Big Head. Very, yeah, I have a big head. Give me a spin. Oh, very cute. Yeah. Is there another? There's another one. Wow. See, I, I knew you would come back with hats. Wow. Now this isn't this isn't alpaca. That's not alpaca. I bought two, I bought two types of yarn in case the alpaca didn't work. I like the the gradation ombre. That's nice. I can't believe you guys made these. They look great. Spin for me. Oh, it looks really good. Yeah. That one's mine, though. Oh. <laughs> like the one that actually fits my head. Listen, safety orange is your move. <laughs> Clashes with my safety green. <laughs> Easy peanut. Oh, I would like that. What? Peanut. That's not my voice. <laughs>